Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm really excited to talk all about leveling up your sunscreen game. That's right. It's all about doing sunscreen like a pro because I know sunscreen is important to you. And I know that you really worry about getting the most out of your sunscreen and really getting all the coverage and UV protection possible. I know you're obsessed so am I, and that's what this video is about. It is all about how to apply your sunscreen like a pro, how to reapply like a pro, and all the things that you want to consider when you're picking your sunscreen to really maximize your sun protection. But it's not just about that. I'm also going to be talking about all the other things you can do to protect yourself from the sun because it's not just about your sunscreen and there's a lot of other things you can do to really level up your game and protect your skin from sun damage and premature aging. So if you guys are so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's level up that SPF game. <music> So let's talk application because I think one of the biggest errors that all of us have made at least once, at least once, if not many, many times in the past, it's not applying enough. You know, this is the one area of skincare where you can feel like free to go ham. Put a generous amount of sunscreen on. Do not skimp on your sunscreen. We saw this demonstrated just recently with Gwyneth Paltrow in her sunscreen application because, you know, she put on a very small amount and people were freaking out. They're like, you're doing it wrong, Gwyneth. Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing it wrong. Now, it's not super complicated complicated, but me just saying put on a generous amount, yeah, it's going to mean a lot of different things to different people. The standard advice is to put on one fourth of a teaspoon of sunscreen for your face. It's a little complicated because it's like, well, if you don't live like in the States, like that's not really like a very accurate measurement. And it's further complicated by the fact that faces aren't all the same size or shape or, you know, they're all different. They're all unique. And so a kind of standard like measurement, yeah, not quite. I've seen people measure their faces and map out exactly how much sunscreen you need. And that's just breaks my brain. That's just too much. One of the easiest kind of like fail proof, I think really for everybody way to ensure that you're putting enough sunscreen on is to use the two or three finger method. Now what you do is you take your finger and you put a line of sunscreen from the tip down to the base of your finger. Two fingers is plenty to cover your face. If you add the third finger on, that's going to be plenty for your face, neck, and maybe your chest as well. So I always find when I do this method, I have more than enough sunscreen. Like it's a very good way to gauge and kind of teach yourself the true amount of sunscreen that you should be putting onto your face. Now, another way that you can use your sunscreen wrong or apply it wrong is by not uh, getting an even distribution of product onto your face. You know, sunscreen is all about getting that even application so that the sunscreen can form a protective film on your skin. That is how sunscreen works. And so if you are not applying an even and generous amount onto your skin, you may have patchy coverage on your face which nobody really wants, right? You wanna know that when you put your sunscreen on, you are being protected. It can be tricky with faces because they're not all flat, right? There's um, bumps and crevices and all of that to deal with. So you wanna pay special attention to like around the nose area, at the hairline. You really wanna make sure that you are applying it with a little bit of intention, with a little bit of mindfulness and really making sure that you're getting it in there and getting an even coverage on all the kind of weird areas around your face. And another one too is the neck. Just make sure you're getting your neck because a lot of people tend to forget their necks and a lot of people tend to forget their ears. And you may be like ears, but like, yeah, ears. <laughs> Especially if you're sporting a shorter haircut, but even if you're not, the tops of your ears are actually very vulnerable to the sun because think about it, the sun's coming down from the top, 
whoa, they're hitting the tops of your ears. So definitely very important to get a sunscreen um, there as well. Another area where we can go wrong with application is not giving yourself a dry time for your sunscreen. As I said, it's all about forming that film on your skin, but it does need a little bit of time to fully form the film and really protect your skin. And this is actually why the general advice is to apply your sunscreen 20 minutes before you go outside. It's to allow those film forming agents to do their job. Now, do you have to wait the full 20 minutes before you say put your makeup on? No, not necessarily. 20 minutes is just that kind of guideline, but really giving yourself a good five to 10 minutes is really crucial. You know, it really is a big no-no to slap your sunscreen on and go straight in for your makeup without allowing a little bit of time because it is very possible if you don't allow a dry time that you are potentially wiping some of your sunscreen off as you're applying like your foundation. So it is important. Same will go for potentially rubbing your hand or maybe even your clothing against your faces. Maybe you're changing in the morning. Just give your skin that like undisrupted time to uh, get that sunscreen dried and get that film formed so you are fully protected. The other area where we can fail to be sunscreen pros is reapplication. Yeah, you know, when you, especially when you're first starting your sunscreen journey, you're like, I put it on. I remembered to put it on this morning. This is so good. It always comes down to that film forming ability. This is essential to how sunscreen protects you is that film and it does wear down as you wear it throughout the day. That's just how it is. Maybe you're sweating a little bit, uh, maybe get a little bit oily, maybe you kind of wiped your forehead with your hand, you kind of wiped a little bit of your sunscreen and disrupted that film just a little bit. You definitely do need to reapply in order to keep that film protecting you throughout the day. Of course, you know, the um, sunscreen can definitely um, start to become less effective throughout the day too, but it really is actually, reapplication really is all about the film, the film, the film, the film. So when should you be reapplying? How many times a day? How should you be reapplying, right? That's where I think a lot of us are like, I'm, just, I'm not even gonna bother because it's just kind of complicated, right? So here's a couple of things to keep in mind. You should be reapplying your sunscreen every two hours that you are in the sun continuously. So every two hours that you are outside getting UV exposure. Now, if you are outside and you are swimming, or you're at the beach, you are sweating a lot, you're just getting wet, right? You know, even if you're wearing waterproof, you know that that film is getting disturbed. So you should be actually be reapplying even more often than every two hours. So anytime you know that you've just gotten wet, reapply that sunscreen. Now, I think one way we tend to think about reapplication is how many times a day should I do it? Like we think about the number of applications within a day, right? Is it three times? Is it four times? Is it five? How many times should I reapply? It's gonna be different based on what you're doing on that day. You really need to kind of take a look at what your day's activity is going to be. For a lot of us, the majority of our daily sunscreen use, we're not getting a ton of sun exposure, right? Maybe we're commuting 20 minutes in the car to the office. We're at work for about eight hours. Maybe we're not really getting a lot of exposure. Maybe there's a window, maybe there's not, right? And then eight hours later, we drive 20 minutes back home and maybe the sun is out at that point in time. So how many times should you reapply then? We kind of know the rules now, right? We know when we should be reapplying. So apply that to how often. You should, in that situation, apply your sunscreen 20 minutes before you get into your car to drive to work. Then throughout the day, probably you don't need to be reapplying. Unless you're sitting really close to like a big window with lots of sun, you're probably not needing to reapply, but really follow your gut instinct and your comfort level on this. If you want to reapply in the middle of the day, feel free to do so. But the majority of us are not getting a lot of UV exposure in kind of like a work office type of setting. Then you wanna reapply your sunscreen 20 minutes before you leave and get into your car, right? Because we wanna make sure that that film is forming on our skin. So really just follow your gut instinct on that. We kind of know the guidelines now for reapplication and why we should be reapplying. So take all of that information and apply it to your daily situations. Now, most of us will reapply our sunscreen outside of our house. We will be out and about and on the go. And I know at least in my experience, and especially when I was first starting my sunscreen journey many years ago, that really held me back from reapplying my sunscreen because I kind of felt 
sort of on. You do adapt. It, it does become your new norm um, and it becomes easier over time. But here's a few kind of hints and tips to kind of make that a little bit easier when you're away from home and reapplying your sunscreen. Number one, don't keep your sunscreen in the car. <laughs> you do not want to keep your sunscreen in a very hot environment because that can actually degrade your sunscreen. So don't keep like an extra bottle in your car, in your glove compartment or anything like that. You, um, if you're carrying a purse or something, that's really the best place for it and keep it on you. But you don't want to expose it to intense heat or direct sunlight. And same goes if you're at the beach and enjoying the sun, cover your bottle of sunscreen up. You don't want to leave it out and exposed. So just really kind of protect the integrity of your sunscreen. Now, another way that you might want to consider reapplication is sun sticks. Sometimes you're in a situation where you can't wash your hands, right? You definitely don't want to be using your dirty paws to wipe your sunscreen all over your face, right? So that's where sun sticks can be really handy because you don't have to touch your fingers to your face to reapply your sunscreen. And they're super easy to carry around. You just throw them in your bag and you don't have to worry about leakage or or anything like that. So I find them really handy for reapplication on the go. Now, one of the questions I get the most, and I think is something that holds a lot of us makeup wearers back from reapplying our sunscreen. How do you get that on over your makeup, right? You've got a full face of makeup. How am I supposed to reapply without like disturbing my foundation? And I was like, isn't that going to get kind of gross, right? There are quite a few different solutions to this. You can try SPF powders over your makeup or even SPF sprays on top of your makeup and none of those should disturb your makeup application. They do have pros, both of them have pros and both of them definitely have drawbacks to them. One of the easiest ways I found to reapply sunscreen over makeup and honestly the most economical way because powders and sprays can get really expensive in my opinion is just to use a um, puff from cushion foundations. These are sometimes referred to as ruby cell puffs. Now you can take one from any cushion foundation that you've had, you can wash those and reuse them, or you can just buy them separate. And that's what I do. I just buy a pack of these on Yes Style or Style Vana, and they are so, so handy for this reapplication method. The reason why it's so budget friendly is because you're just going to use the sunscreen you already use. Uh, you don't have to use a separate product for this. So I love it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your sunscreen and dot it all over your face, right on top of your makeup. And you aren't going to rub it in. You're just going to put dots. Um, it's about 30 ish dots for your whole face. The reason that you're doing this is we're going to ensure that we're going to get an even coverage of sunscreen. And then you're going to take your cushion puff and just tap it against your skin. And you're essentially going to tap that sunscreen into your skin. You are not rubbing, you are not swiping. Um, you are just going in an up and down motion tapping. And that's what preserves your makeup, but gets that sunscreen to form a film on top of your makeup. It's not the best with mineral sunscreen. I will admit, especially something with a white cast can be a little tricky to get an even layer with a cushion puff, but it's great with really cosmetically elegant chemical formulations, especially the lighter type of sunscreens. It works gorgeously on top. Now that we've talked about applying and reapplying like a pro, let's talk about choosing your sunscreen like a pro. And I really think everybody should embrace the concept of a sunscreen wardrobe because it is a lot to ask one sunscreen to demand that it does it all for every situation in your life. Just like you wouldn't wear the same shirt in cold weather and in warm weather, right? You have different wardrobe options for different weather circumstances. You need different sunscreens for different activities. This does not need to be complicated. This does not need to take a ton of money, right? A lot of investment. It does not need to be a lot of products. There's three essential categories in a, a sunscreen wardrobe that I think you need to think about. An everyday sunscreen. So something that is elegant, easy to wear. Then you need a waterproof or water resistant sunscreen. And the third category that you need to 
consider is body sunscreen. Now this whole sunscreen wardrobe concept is really deep and I cannot take the time to talk about it now. It could be its own video and it already is its own video. I made my sunscreen wardrobe video so I'm going to link it for you guys right up here as well as in the info box if you want to pause this. Go check that one out and then come back or check it out at a later date. I talk about this concept a little bit more in depth and I share all of my uh, sunscreen wardrobe in that video too. And the third thing I want to talk about when it comes to leveling up your sunscreen game is stop relying on that SPF. What? Yeah, that's not what you expected me to say. This is not the only way to protect yourself, nor should it be the only way you are protecting yourself. Because if you're serious about this, if sunscreen is really important to you and protecting yourself from the sun is important, you should not be demanding that your sunscreen do it all because it's gonna have shortcomings. It's not this infallible shield. There are other ways that you can protect yourself and it gives you that peace of mind in case maybe you didn't apply enough that day. Maybe you were sweating a little bit. Maybe you just couldn't reapply. These are other things that you can do to keep your skin protected. When it comes to clothing, this is a really great way to protect yourself, especially your body from the sun. This is particularly good if you're in a situation where you couldn't apply body sunscreen. Maybe you're just not really good at reapplying body sunscreen, right? So this can be a great way to protect yourself. You can look for UPF rated fabrics. This is essentially the SPF rating of fabric. So they make lots of like cool looking, honestly, sun protective clothing. They're a little bit expensive, but I think they can be worth it. Like I said, especially if your body sunscreen game is not tight. Now you don't need UPF rated clothing to get UV protection from your wardrobe. Um, most fabrics do offer a degree of UV protection. Denim and wool particularly very good, very good at UV protection. Um, but one of the easiest ways, especially if you're just kind of caught off guard and you don't have any body sunscreen, but you want to maybe protect your arms or legs, look for fabrics that have opacity to them, meaning they don't let light through. Um, that's one of the best ways to ensure that you definitely are blocking out quite a bit of UV from uh, hitting your skin. You want to look for uh, fabrics that are woven quite tightly. That's another way that's not going to let a lot of light through them. So loosely woven clothes, uh, very light or transparent types of fabrics, not offering a lot of UV protection, right? But if you're getting um, very solid, opaque types of fabrics, you can rest assured that you are getting a degree of UV protection from your clothing. One of my favorite, and I really think the most handy pieces of UV protective clothing that I have is sun sleeves. These are actually very popular in Asia, and I think they should just become very popular because these are so invaluable, especially if you're somebody who is starting to notice maybe or worried about sun damage on your arms. Um, and I think that one of the biggest culprits of this is actually driving or being a passenger in a car. Uh, I don't know. My car feels like a magnet for UV, especially in the summertime. Oh, my skin can get quite hot to the touch just from being a passenger or driving in a car. Like it's just you know the sun is just beaming down on your skin. And so that's where the sun sleeves come in because these are so handy to just slip on when you're about to drive and they offer such good protection. These are like UV um, protective and rated fabrics. Sleeve is a little bit too short so I would get a little bit of exposure here but look at how protected I am. You know what I mean? And I love that it goes over your hands. This particular style does because that's going to protect the tops of your hands when you're driving. Also very vulnerable to UV damage. I know some people like to use gloves, um, driving gloves, but what I like about this style is you can um, wear short sleeves. Maybe you forgot a sweater or something. You can wear short sleeves and still get the protection as you're driving in your car. These are great. I got mine on Yes Style. Um, I got these a little while ago. They do offer lots of different similar styles and they're very affordable. Sunglasses are a crucial part of your sun protection toolbox. Not only do they protect your eyeballs from damaging UV rays, but a nice big Big lens can cover a good portion of your face, further protecting your skin, not just from sunscreen, right? But further protecting that area um, from premature aging, the development of fine lines. And I do tend to notice that uh, sunspots or sun damage 
really like to accumulate on that nice high cheekbone. So if you get a good big lens, that will definitely help cover those areas, giving you even more protection. If you are buying them like off the rack, look for lenses that are rated broad spectrum, UVB, UVA um, spectrum rated. If you're gonna get like a custom lens or a prescriptive sunglass made, you wanna look for um, Trivex material, polycarbonate, or any high index material is going to offer UV protection. It's just naturally built into the lenses even before you make them into sunglasses. So that's another level of UV protection. Um, ask for a dark tint or polarization. And if you're looking for the ultimate pair of like UV blocking sunglasses, get a mirror coat on top of those lenses and you will be golden. And I saved the best for last because this is actually one of the easiest tips to incorporate into your sun protection game, but it is actually the one that I think makes the biggest difference and the biggest impact in addition to your sunscreen. And that is wearing a hat. But a lot of us are not like wearing hats. You know what I mean? We're not, but we really should be because these are so good. Like I said, in addition to your sunscreen, these are amazing at keeping the intensity of the sun and the UV rays off of your face because a hat with a nice big brim is going to block the sun. It's gonna, it's gonna create some shade and some protection over your face. If you reduce the intensity of the sun hitting your face, you're getting better sun protection. So yeah, hats are the way to go. Now, I think when you think about like sun hats being like these big brimmed kind of like beach hats, and those definitely offer probably the best protection. A nice wide brim is gonna really kind of cover a larger area, but I'm not gonna wear that going to the grocery store. Like I would just feel very strange. I think people would probably look at me like that lady's kind of weird, right? It's just not appropriate for all situations, like not gonna fit in your car. So yeah, we know that that's the best, but it's not the best option for a lot of us on the daily. So here's a few of my hat collection um, that I would recommend looking for, especially if you're somebody who feels a little bit awkward wearing a hat. So I love this visor. I bought it off of Amazon a couple of years ago and it's kind of funky and fun. The visor itself is pretty long, so you're getting pretty good coverage um, with the front of your face. This is one of those types of hats I grab when I'm wearing a ponytail or a bun because it doesn't mess up your hair. Baseball caps definitely do offer some sun protection. They usually don't have super long um, brims at the front, but again, they're offering some protection. And I find them like the easiest when you just kind of want to blend in. You don't want to look like the hat lady. Baseball caps are a great way to go. My favorite type of sun hat that doesn't feel super extra is a bucket hat. And I'm so happy these are coming back into style because there's lots of choices now. These are great because they do have the full brim all the way around, but they're just not so big, so floppy, so in your face, you know what I mean? So these are offering really nice protection. So I hope you guys enjoy that roundup of all the tips and tricks to really level up your sunscreen game and do it like a pro. And I'm curious, are you incorporating any of these tips or concepts into your current sunscreen game or are you going to pledge to do so in the future? Let me know in the comment box below. If you love the video, it was really helpful to you, but maybe you have not hit subscribe yet, please consider subscribing to my channel before you go. I release two new skincare focus videos every single week and don't forget to turn on notifications. I hope you guys are healthy, happy, safe, and protected from the sun wherever you are in the world. I cannot wait to see you in the next video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.